Welcome to Cravings Control for Fat Loss. I'm your host, Laura Cavallo, former sugar binger, overeater, and yo-yo dieter turned fat loss and cravings coach for hundreds of busy women. Here at Cravings Control for Fat Loss, I'll be sharing mindset, movement, and metabolism strategies for those who are ready to ditch the fat diet cycle and slim down without counting calories, tracking points, or giving up any of the foods they love. Get ready to embrace progress over perfection, grace over guilt, and bring curiosity and learning to the inevitable ups and downs of your life. Expect a decrease in your cravings while seeing and feeling an improvement in how you look, how you feel, and your overall quality of life. I am so excited you're here, boo. Let's get started. Welcome to another episode of Cravings Control for Fat Loss. My name is Laura Cavallo, your cravings coach, and today I want to share with you three important lessons that I learned and wish I had known um, when I was going through my five years of fad dieting. And at that point, I had done over 10 fad diets, ranging from keto, paleo, the swimsuit diet, clean diet, the body ecology diet, low carb, vegetarian, <laughs> vegan. I literally tried all the things. I was like, oh, this is like shiny and new. I will try that. And the reason I want to share this is because I think it's important to put things in perspective and hear from people that have been through the same struggles maybe that you're going through. And I know that a big aha moment for me in my journey towards more moderate eating, more balanced eating, towards more satisfying eating was hearing from my mentor and coach, and maybe you've heard her on the podcast, Jill Coleman. My aha moment came when I saw her having a glass of wine on a Tuesday and some Reese's Pieces on a Wednesday. And she was still getting up the next day and exercising and working out and eating balanced and moderate. And it didn't mean that it had to be all or nothing. And so I hope that some of what I share today can help you move forward with imperfect action and less shame and guilt, more consistency and patience. So this is going to be a quickie but goodie. The first lesson I want to share with you is that it's not about being perfect when it comes to your nutrition or even your exercise routine. And I say this as a recovering perfectionist. Like I grew up constantly trying to be the best and improve and I held myself to a really high standard. My dad passed away at a young age and so I always felt this need to perform and this need to be the star child and to not rock the boat and to just make my family proud of me. And I carried this perfectionist into my teens and my 20s, my collegiate years playing lacrosse and all of my jobs. And, you know, there's instances where I remember in my 20s, I had an intense anxiety attack and I thought I was having a heart attack. And it was due to stress and some of the pressures I was putting on myself at work. And I had to go to the doctor and get an EKG. And my mom had to come in from Long Island. I was living in Manhattan at that time or Brooklyn. And it was just... I didn't realize how much pressure I was putting on myself. And it wasn't until uh, around 2015, 2016, when I started seeing how much my perfectionist tendencies were actually holding me back from progressing in my career, progressing in my nutrition, progressing in my health goals, and just having more ease and enjoyment in my life. I was just constantly... (laughs) So I always just felt like I wasn't enough and that I didn't deserve things because I didn't do them well enough. And so I was going through life in this perpetual state of lacking confidence and lacking trust in myself and always trying to live up to this unattainable. So when it comes to nutrition, there is no perfect way of eating. And you'll hear me speak more in number three about how you're an individual and there is no perfect diet for two people, right? There's no no two people are going to be eating the same way and have the same results and have the most perfect diet. There's It's just very, very slim chances. So I want you to think about the fact that perfectionism can be paralyzing, right? And how many times has perfectionism stood in your way of moving forward, of taking a step, of the chance of possibly messing up, of just taking action. 
So instead, I want you to think about moving forward in your health journey, moving forward in your nutrition, moving forward with imperfect action, okay? So I want you to think about instead of perfectionism, think about imperfect action as your guiding star, as your North Star, as your operating mechanism, as one of your variables that is going to help you stay consistent, as your value system, right? So imperfect action being part of your value system so that you can actually move forward, actually learn, actually grow and do it along the way versus not even doing it because you're so worried about being perfect. So that's the first lesson I would share. The second lesson I want to share is to let go of shame and guilt. And I know that this is harder said than done, but this goes hand in hand with being a perfectionist, right? Because when you don't execute something as well as you had thought or you find the faults in it, you feel really like let down and like ashamed that you weren't as good and like you could have done better. But what I learned a lot in my personal journey of healing from my dad passing away and just my childhood trauma is that guilt is the one emotion that does not serve us. It does not teach us anything. It doesn't give us any lessons. It does not propel us to forward action. It just makes you ruminate on (laughs) what went bad without any underlying lessons, right? And so I want you to think of shame and guilt as kind of like a fog. And the more shame and guilt you have, the more of that fog thickens. And when you can't see through the fog and you can only see the shame and guilt, you literally cannot move forward, right? You, the only thing you see is that guilt, that shame. You can't understand what went wrong. You can't ask yourself, why am I craving? You can't ask yourself, why did I overeat? The only thing you start to say to yourself is like, I'm a bad person. I can't believe I did that. I should have had more self-control. I should have been better. I should have been stronger, right? That fog of shame and guilt is holding you back from progress. It's holding you back from learning. It's holding you back from understanding how your body is responding to things. And as an individual in this journey, you need to be connected to what your body is communicating with you on all levels, from a mental level, an emotional level, and a physical level. Some ways that you can start to let go of shame and guilt is just leading with more grace, leading with more understanding, realizing you're a human being. You're just having a human experience in this world. Your cravings aren't just because you're a bad person. You are an emotional being that is stressed and tired and anxious and happy. All those things can trigger cravings, right? All those things can trigger overeating. Are you never going to feel stressed again? Are you never going to feel happy again? No, of course not. So lead with more grace, lead with more understanding. Take a bird's eye view. Take a step back. Look at the full situation. How can you learn from this? What can you take out of this to move forward? Instead of leading with guilt, what's the lesson? So those are some ways that you can start to let go of shame and guilt and really just move forward. And the last lesson I want to share is that (laughs) there is no miracle cure. (laughs) There is no magic pill. There is no magic potion. There is no perfect diet. If there was, don't you think we'd all be doing it? (laughs) If there was a pill that could cure everything or if there was a surgery that could help all of us be fit and healthy and athletic or, you know, if there was one superfood that we would all eat and we would be happy and healthy and and fit and leaner, don't you think we would all be doing it and taking it and that the dieting industry wouldn't be a multi-billion dollar industry with the next fad diet coming out every year? That alone should show you that there is no fast track to fat loss. There is no fast track to cravings control. There is no miracle drug and no miracle cure. There is only patience and consistency. And you are an individual and you have to find what works for you, right? You have to figure out how your body responds to certain foods. You have to understand what your particular cravings triggers are. You have to understand how to eat with your set schedule, with your demands of your life, with your routine, with your preferences with what access to food you have, 
what cultural beliefs and norms you want to keep in your your food traditions. All of that is individual to you. And it's not separate from your journey in health, in cravings, and in fat loss. And I wish that I had really known this because I was so starstruck by the 30-day keto challenge and, you know, the the paleo book I bought, just do this and you'll be shredded and the body ecology diet and the swimsuit diet for four weeks. Like I just kept buying these things that were promising these drastic changes and these things didn't teach me anything. They didn't teach me how to eat for my lifestyle. They didn't teach me how to understand my biofeedback. They didn't teach me how to monitor sleep and stress for overall long-term fat loss. They didn't teach me how to eat in a way that I can do at a restaurant or on vacation or while I'm on the go or while I don't have time to prep. These diets made me dumber and they made me think that I should be achieving things in 30 days and losing 10 pounds in 30 days. And then when I didn't, I felt more shame and guilt. Number two, right? And then I felt like I wasn't perfect and the cycle continued. So take it from me. Really listen to these lessons. I hope that they're helpful and I hope that they bring some things to light for you. And I hope that like you truly give yourself time and patience and just keep going. As much time as you think it's going to take you to lose weight, I want you to double that and give yourself the time to figure it out as it fits into your lifestyle. And you're going to mess up along the way, right? Because there is no perfect way of doing things. Life is going to happen. Life has gotten a lot more complex, a lot more complicated, and we have to be able to navigate these challenges. That's the only way you're going to be successful long term. Okay, thank you for joining me today for today's special episode. Give a listen. I have another announcement right after this. If you're a busy woman who wants to reduce cravings, hunger, and overeating by up to 70% so you can naturally eat less and sustainably lose weight, I want to invite you to my brand new six-week coaching program, The Cravings Code which starts on Monday, May 8th. The Cravings Code is my first ever small group program that provides one-on-one high-touch coaching while connecting you with a community of other like-minded women. I will be sharing the same strategies and systems that have helped my clients consistently see a drop in weight, inches, and cravings. If you want to receive an opportunity to join, follow the link below to add your name. This will be an application-based program because I want to make sure you're ready and excited to be part of the crew. The program opens for enrollment Wednesday, May 3rd, and requires a short application to make sure you're the right fit for the program and that you're excited to be part of the crew. Click below and add your name to our email list so you can be notified when the program opens for enrollment. 